So let's consider some basic facts on locally compact Hausdorff spaces. Of course, we need uh, Hausdorffness to have some uh, nice analytic properties like existence of unique, lim unique limits and so on. So we will consider those topological spaces which enjoy both local compactness as well as Hausdorff property. So if you start with a local, locally compact Hausdorff space X, then the first theorem says that if X is a point in X and it has an open neighborhood U, then there exists an open neighborhood V of X such that V, the, the closure of V uh, sits inside U. So this is about small uh, clo uh, compact neighborhoods existence of small compact neighborhoods meaning that no matter how small this open neighborhood u is uh, there is something smaller v is something smaller uh, which contains uh, whose closure is contained in u so this is the first nice theorem that uh, we shall need and the second one is a very important uh, result in topology and this is called Eurizone's lemma even though it's called a lemma uh, I'll state it as a theorem because it's quite important and this Eurizone's lemma states that given a compact set k in x and an open set of V which contains K. So, open set V containing K, there exists a continuous function, continuous function F from X to C such that The first property is that the support of F is compact and lies in V, meaning that support of F is a subset of V. And secondly, that F is identically equal to 1 on K and is and F is 0 outside V meaning on V complement it is 0. So, Eurizone's lemma guarantees the existence of such a function on a locally compact Hausdorff spaces. Uh, actually, uh, here we can we can actually take the range to be 0 1 rather than the whole complex numbers because F only takes values between 0 and 1. So, we will use Eurizone's lemma to create what are called partitions of unity. So, before I go to the partition of unity uh, result, let us fix some notation. So, we will say that we will write that k, uh, let me call it less than f. So, this will mean that k is is compact f is a continuous function with compact support on x such that it lies between the range of f lies between 0 and 1 and then uh, finally that f is identically equal to 1 on k. So, this is the notation in this case. A second notation that we will use is f less than v and this will mean that v is an open set, f is still a continuous function with compact support 
uh, with the values uh, between 0 and 1 and that the support of f is contained inside v. So, this means that f is identically equal to 0 on v complement. So, in terms of this notation, uh, Eurizone's lemma, lemma with this notation states that given k compact sitting inside v open, so this is compact and this is open, there exists a continuous function with compact support such that k is a subset of f is a is less than f is less than v. So, I am putting together these two parts of the notation and uh, this means that f has range uh, between 0 and 1 and f is 1 on k and f is 0 on on k and f is 0 on the complement of v. Note that this is also the same as saying that this also means that we have the inequality, we have the point wise point wise inequality inequality with the indicator function of the compact set k is less than or equal to f and it is less than or equal to the indicator function of v. So, we are trying to sandwich a continuous function in between the indicator function of a compact set and the indicator function of an open set. So, let us see the statement of the partition of unity theorem. It says that on a locally compact Hausdorff space x, if we have a finite collection of open sets v1, v2, vn, these are all open in x and if you have a compact set k, k is compact which is contained in the union of these uh, v i's, then there exist functions phi i less than v i. Remember that this means that uh, support of first that phi i is a continuous function with compact support with values between 0 and 1 and support of phi i is a subset of v i. So, there exists for each i a, a function continuous function with compact support phi i whose uh, support lies inside v i and such that for any x in, in this compact set k we have that the sum of phi i from 1 to n evaluated at x sums up to 1 and this is why it is called a partition of unity. Partition of unity because uh, you are breaking up this function uh, which is identically 1 uh, on k into parts which has uh, support inside compact support inside v i. So, uh, this collection phi i i equal to 1 to n is called a partition of unity subordinate to the collection v i i equal to 1 to n. So, let us try to see how this how to prove this partition of unity uh, existence of this partition of unity using the Eurizone's lemma.
So, to prove this we will use the first theorem that we saw about small existence of small compact neighborhoods. So, from theorem 1 above uh, for each x in the compact set k there exists a neighborhood an open neighborhood open neighborhood let us call it w x uh, of x such that the closure of w x lies in some v i for some i. And now we can take the open cover Uh, the unions of uh, this w x x in k and this contains k. So, by compactness by compactness there exists x 1 x 2 finitely many points x uh, m say such that k is a subset of the finite union i equal to 1 to m w x i and so for each i uh, in 1 to n define h i to be the union of uh, the compact sets w x i bar such that this w x uh, let us write k here w x k bar such that w x k bar lies in v i. So, once we fix i we only choose those uh, w x i's whose closure is a subset of V i. So, this union is a compact set uh, sitting inside V i. So, now Eurizone's lemma Eurizone's lemma implies that there exists function there exists a function C i uh, so, continuous function with compact support such that h i less than c i less than v i. So, this means that uh, c i is identically 1 on h i and vanishes outside v i. c i is identically 1 on h i and uh, c i is 0 on v i complement and of course, we have 0 less than or equal to c i less than or equal to 1 for all x. So, now we will define our phi i s the required partition of unity using this c i s. So, define phi 1 to be c 1 phi 2 to be 1 minus c 1 times c 2 phi 3 to be 1 minus c 1 1 minus c 2 times c 3 and so on we can define for each i up from 1 to n phi i the last one will be the product of 1 minus c 1 1 minus c 2 and so on up to 1 minus c n minus 1 and multiplied by c n. So, now uh, check that check the following formula that the summation of phi i i equal to 1 to n 
is nothing but 1 minus 1 minus c1 1 minus c2 up to 1 minus cn. So, for example, you can prove this by induction prove by induction. For example, if you have just 2 phi 1 plus phi 2, this is 1 minus, so first one is C 1 plus 1 minus C 1 times C 2 and so uh, this is equal to C 1 plus C 2 minus C 1 C 2 and if you add and subtract 1. So, let me add 1 and subtract 1 and we can collect. So, I will take the positive 1 and we can collect the other terms as 1 minus C 1 times 1 minus C 2 because this is nothing but 1 minus C 1 minus C 2 plus C 1 C 2 and so there is a minus sign here which takes care of the uh, which gives you the right formula. So, we can do it for 2 and then we can assume for uh, i and uh, rather assume for n minus 1 and prove it for n. So, I leave it as an exercise to prove this result by induction and now since k is a subset of the union of h i's i equal to 1 to n for each x in k x belongs to h i for some i and therefore c i of x equals 1. So, this implies that 1 minus c 1, 1 minus c 2, 1 minus c 3 up to 1 minus c n applied at x. So, this function applied at x, this is just the point wise multiplication, this is 0 for any x. So, this implies that the summation of phi i x i equal to 1 to n which is 1 minus this product. Uh, let me write the product i equal to 1 to n 1 minus c i x this is 0. So, this is equal to 1. So, this proves the existence of partitions of unity which we will use uh, quite significantly in the proof of the Ries representation theorem.